said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy. I'm Anthony Walker and this is Unsung, the nonprofit news magazine show that features news and events from our nonprofit community and also the good things that you do. I'm coming to you from the north side. It's a beautiful summer day, so what better place to record and show you a great example of the revitalization projects. No, I'm not referring to the Pride Breaking 500 this season. I'm talking about grassroots efforts that have taken over empty urban spaces and reused them for art, music, events, and other activities. One such space is here on the north side and was home to Red Up Thread Up, a clothing swap that benefits local charities. We'll talk to Jenny Roth, the organizer, and we'll also hear from a few of our Jefferson Award finalists. Now, let's take a look at what is going on in our nonprofit community. National Geographic has named Pittsburgh one of the six best cities to kayak. The article recommends that you start downtown on the Allegheny River behind me and paddle the three miles round trip to Washington's Landing. Watch out for beavers, muskrats, and other wildlife though. Kayak Pittsburgh will get you all hooked up for the trip. They are here on North Shore by PNC Park. A study released recently as reported in the Post-Gazette reveals the lasting long-term impact of a solid preschool education, especially in disadvantaged communities. The report shows that children who attended an established preschool program in Chicago public schools completed high school at higher rates, improved living standards, stayed out of jail, and had less likelihood of substance abuse into adulthood. A group of researchers from the University of Minnesota for 25 years tracked 1,400 Chicago students who attended early childhood programs. They compared those who started at preschool at age three in child parent centers, which offer comprehensive services for kids in low-income Chicago neighborhoods through second or third grade, and students who didn't attend preschool at all or went to a typical Head Start program. The study is of interest in our community as proposed state budget cuts will impact our nonprofit organization's abilities to provide early education programs to our citizens. Pittsburgh Give Camp is a weekend long event where software developers, designers, and database administrators donate their time to create custom software for nonprofit organizations. The only limitation is that the project should be scoped to be able to be completed in a weekend. Give Camp will be hosted by Development Dominions International in Bridgeville from July 15th to the 17th. Nonprofits interested in receiving free technical help can apply at pghgivecamp.org. Geeks can sign up to volunteer their time at the event on the site as well. This is a great opportunity to give back through your expertise. Now, let's go check out Red Up Thread Up right up the street from here. Red Up Thread Up is a community-driven event. Um, community members have to donate clothing um, and then come to the event to pick out clothing and swap it. Um, and proceeds from tote bag sales will go to East End Cooperative Ministries. And what we do, we provide um, community services for the East End area. And they can consist of um, housing services, uh, children and youth services or housing services. I think it's wonderful that you're providing a service for those who are in need of clothing. Um, that's our whole mission here on earth to provide. And our purpose is, is to help those who are um, not able to help themselves. I originally formed Red Up Thread Up because I heard about a similar event in Toronto about two or three years ago from some blogs that I follow. Um, some people had arranged a community clothing swap in their neighborhood and we held our first event at WIEP Studios. Um, WIEP was a partner of the first event um, and I wanted to do it again in the spring because people are changing their wardrobes over I think in both the fall and the spring because of the weather change. So it's a great time to clean out your closet and instead of just doing a dump at Goodwill you can um, take your clothes to a clothing swap and get some new clothes and also benefit a charity at the same time. So what I have are, I have my spinning wheel here and I have pieces of a sweater that I've taken apart. So this is the back of the sweater and I have the front of the sweater and each of the sleeves. 
and I'm unraveling them to make uh, what is a very thin uh, yarn. It's cashmere yarn and it's extremely thin, so it's too thin to use uh, to make back into something. So I'm plying it on my spinning wheel. So I'm basically twisting the four different threads that I have coming from the four different pieces back together into one thicker piece of yarn that I can actually use to make back into something. I have a pair of mittens here that I actually made from a different sweater that I took apart and recycled. So yeah, it's, there's no limit. It can become, you know, anything that you can imagine. Usually I just source sweaters from thrift stores, places like that, that, that you would go to find used clothing already. So if, um, if people are looking to donate clothes to that, I would say I'm certainly not the only person who's doing this. So the best place to send them is to Goodwill, Salvation Army, any place like that that's, that's going to resell them. You know, if, you're, if you think you should try it, then if it's something you're interested in, definitely give it a try. You don't need a spinning wheel to do it. You can do it just with your own hands, just pulling the yarn out of the sweater. This is just a way that I like to do it, so do whatever works for you. Uh, the space was donated for free um, from the Mattress Factory and the Saxifrage School, so we're really happy to be in there this time. Well, you can either go online. It's uh, www.eecm.org. Uh, you can contact us there, or you can contact us via telephone at 412-361-5549. And we're located at 250 right now, North Highland Avenue. But we are in the process of building a brand new Community of Hope site. Like Jenny said, you can look for Red Up Thread Up in both the spring and fall. Stay tuned to RedUpThreadUp.com for future editions. 50 honorees will be recognized in April at one of Pittsburgh's biggest gatherings of community service volunteers at Carnegie Music Hall for the annual Jefferson Awards presentations. They were selected by a community judging panel from more than 150 award nominations received during 2010 and each received a Bronze Jefferson Award medallion. The Wallace Avenue Kitchen is open four days a week from 11 to 1 for a nice hot meal. I've been volunteering now for almost eight years and this is my home away from home. I really enjoy it. It gives me a chance to see how the other half lives that are less fortunate than I am. I've really became quite close to our patrons and really miss them when they're not here. I have a lot of names beside Miss Burt. <laughs> sometimes I'm auntie, sometimes grandma, sometimes mom. And uh, every day when they come in, I get a hug. Some people that come and say that uh, if they didn't get a meal here, they wouldn't eat. And I didn't believe it at first, but then it came from more than one person. And uh, I'm just glad that we're able to accommodate them, you know. But this is a part of a ministry to me now because I, I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't do this. This is just a, it's a joy to work here. This really is. Of the 50 honorees, seven were selected as Jefferson Award finalists by a committee of 10 representatives from the local public and private sectors. In addition to a medallion, each received $1,000 for the nonprofit organization of his or her choice and one, Barb Sappy of Project Linus, was chosen to carry Pittsburgh's flag of volunteerism to the National Jefferson Awards that will be celebrated over two days in Washington, D.C. in June. Emergency rooms, any time that we know of a child that's in a traumatized situation, we call it a hug when it's needed the most. The National Jefferson Awards program was launched in 1972 by the American Institute for Public Service to recognize those who perform remarkable deeds in community service without expectation of reward or recognition. Six years later, in 1978, the program was started in Pittsburgh, where it is co-sponsored by the Pittsburgh Foundation, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, the Heinz Endowments, and Highmark. The Westmoreland Arts and Heritage Festival returns to Twin Lakes Park in Greensburg from July 1st to the 4th. The festival includes art, music, food, and activities from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. each day. It is free to the public, and 2011 marks the 37th year of the annual festival. More info is available at artsandheritage.com. 
Bricolage and Toonzeum present the Downtown Heroes Block Party, two of downtown's most eclectic and innovative nonprofit arts organizations are teaming up to bring you a day of superhero themed activities for the whole family. Parents and kids aged 6 to 12 will enjoy a host of activities, including a Superman sound effects workshop, make your own superhero costumes, outdoor jazz, free comic books, and a special matinee performance of Midnight Radio Superhero Edition. Other participating organizations include the August Wilson Center, Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership, and Visit Pittsburgh. All activities are located on the 900 block of Liberty Avenue downtown on June 25th. Most events are free. For a full list, please visit webbricolage.org. Just Harvest will host the Pittsburgh premiere of Food Stamped, a documentary by Shira and Neil of Potash on Tuesday, June 21st at 6 p.m. The screening and Just Harvest annual meeting take place at United Steelworkers 60 Boulevard of the Allies. Admission is free. You can find out more about the movie at foodstamps.com and more about Just Harvest at justharvest.org. Nonprofits, especially human service organizations, have asked for your help as they inform legislators of the valuable services they provide that save taxpayers money. Send an electronic postcard to the legislator of your choosing automatically at whycutwhatworks.org. Unsung has something special coming in the next episode, so stay tuned to check it out. You can also check out previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. You should also let us know how you make a difference in the community by adding your comment to this video. I've been your host, Anthony Walker. It's summer. Go enjoy it. Keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. So I said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car. And these dudes fucking mad cause they can't even find a day job. I stay hard with or without Viagra. And I said the flow crush like the force of Niagara. I'm after a major label budget, but since I'm not.